Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the UK today here at the Sh Museum. But we're going to be heading up to Chartwell to go and get a progress update on the AMG GT Black Series. Now, of course, before I went to the USA, I dropped it off for the paint transformation to solar beam yellow. The guys have been stripping down the car and today we're going to go and check out a few things. There are a couple of questions and things that we need to answer, but we're actually going to head up in the Taycan even though it's a 250 mile return trip and the range on the Taycan is a little under 200 miles. Now, this is always a bit of an experiment, but the beauty of having a charger from SeaTac here at the Sh Museum is that at the moment it's charging and we will at least be able to depart on about 100% or very near, which means we can get back on basically zero, having stopped for a quick top up along the way. So we will see exactly how that goes, talk a little bit more about how I'm using the Taycan these days now that I have my own charger, but crucially, get up to Chartwell to go have an update on the GT Black Series. There has been a little bit of a shuffle around with the cars in the garage. We popped everything over on this side, which is more the permanent or museum style display, we could say. I wanted to pull the GT in the center to have them out towards the front. Obviously, when the GT Black Series and the STO come back, we've got a little bit more space and we'll work out exactly how that's going to be. Not to say that the cars on this side aren't in some cases permanent. Of course, the Vantage Roadster, probably the GTR Roadster as well, a couple of others too. But for the moment, we have lined them up in height order. Now quickly, because you might be wondering why on earth am I wearing sunglasses? I am no longer in California or Florida. Unfortunately, I have a little bit of an inflamed eye. So just keeping those on for the moment, it's a little bit nicer for me. But for the time being, we've got things tidied up a little bit here. We're gonna be heading in the Taycan. Now, as I've said a few times, I've been using this much more as my daily driver to get to and from home to here at the Sh Museum. Having the charger means that I can top it up about once a week if I'm driving it every day, let's say, and it keeps it nicely charged up. You don't wanna do it all the time you don't want to keep it on 100% permanently because it's not so good for the battery but at the moment if we come through and have a little look handles pop out what charge do we actually have in here let's just wake this up quickly and see what it tells us we are up to 89% so it needs about an hour from now to get that fully topped up now I guess we could go as it is, but I think it'd be quite fun to wait until we get it to 100% because the range of the Taycan, realistically from 100 down to let's say 5% or so, is just a touch under 200 miles. As I said, today's journey is going to be about 250 miles in total, which means we are forced into a charging station at some point along the way. And you don't want to do it when the charge is very high because it can't charge at maximum capacity. You want to charge when it's below about 52% to get the most out of it. So I'll try and find one when we're on the way back, pretty much nearly back to base. And hopefully we will be lucky and not have machines out of order, queues or something going wrong with the car but we'll see how that goes a little bit later on. I've done just shy of 3,000 miles now on the Taycan, but I want to do more. I want to keep learning, understanding, getting familiar with this. So for the time being, it is all plugged in to the SeaTac Charge Storm 2. It is charging up. We've got the blue blinking light. Needs about an hour to get that up, as I said, to about 100%. Then we'll get it unplugged. We'll get out on the road and we'll go see how the GT Black Series is coming along, which, as I said, has a few questions. The guys have been working on stripping it down, pulling out all of the components, basically making it easier to start work on the body panels to respray them into solar beam but there are things like the glass that needs removing which I gather isn't so easy and a few other updates as well we can talk about when we get up to Chartwell. Fast forward not all that long and we now have the solid blue light. We've got the two chargers here. You can charge two cars at once, but solid light means we are complete. Just come and double check this very quickly. We have 100%. It claims 214 miles, but that will do for the moment. We will unplug this press the button, wait a second, then it releases, can pull that out. I'll wrap this up and put it away tidily, and then we can take the Taycan out and get this journey started. At this point, we've been driving for just over 30 miles. We are now down to 87% of charge and have 185 miles of range to go, 87 miles of our journey to go. So of course we will need to charge up on the way back. We would be about 25 miles shy if we tried to do it all in one. Now, if I was driving at 60 miles an hour instead of 70 miles an hour, and I put the car into range mode, we're driving in normal, we could possibly do that. It would be an interesting experiment, but I want this to be a bit more real world, to be what you actually do rather than turning off the air conditioning and driving really slowly because that's not realistic when you're trying to look at this. And I do have an idea for where we can stop on the way back home, 
and hopefully we'll be able to get there and it will all be well. We'll see how that goes later on. You might be wondering about this, the crack that we still have in the windshield. I have not yet had that sorted out yet. It's basically lined up to be done. It just needs this car to be dropped off to get it done. I just haven't rushed into it, obviously, while being away. So we'll get that sorted at some point in the future. For now, it is a leisurely stroll, a gentle, quiet, calm cruise using the adaptive cruise control, the lane assist, all of these funky bits of technology up towards Chartwell. And hopefully it will be a journey without incident. Very uneventful, nice cruise to go and see the GT Black Series. We have made it back then to Chartwell, where a couple of weeks ago we went over the plans with the GT Black Series when I dropped it off. Today it is going to be looking quite differently, but before we pop inside, let me quickly show you how we have done on the Taycan front, which is now reporting 49% remaining and 106 miles of range. So we are going to need to do a little bit of a top up on the way home, but technically only about 20 miles or so. So a bit of trial and error to see how that's going to work out. For the time being, let's head inside and mark my words, this is going to look a little bit different. Come and have a look at this then. What an unusual sight to see the Schmimobiles GT Black Series fully stripped down like this to be painted into the solar beam yellow. All of the bodywork has been pulled off. And when it's parked like this as a rolling chassis, it almost looks like any AMG GT. Without the rear spoiler and the aggressive bodywork, you would not know that this was a GT Black Series. But over here, we've got some of the parts, some of which have actually been prepared, ready for painting, like the wing panels and the doors. We've got the bumpers as well. We can take a full look at those in a moment. But this is where things are at at this stage, heavily stripped down. The front bumper has been taken off, the wing panels have gone, the doors are off, the quarter windows have been taken out, the side skirts and all of the carbon has been taken off, the rear wing, the tail lights, the rear bumper as well, and down here, we've got quite a nice view of the exhaust system and some of the heat shielding as well. The windows will be taken out, so this needs to be done next. The rear glass, and also the front windscreen. That needs to be done very carefully. It's a difficult process to do it without cracking, so time and care needs to be taken. But of course, those need to come out along with the seals so that they can be painted up properly. The carbon roof, however, is actually bonded to the car. So that has to stay in place and be masked out. The roof rails have been taken off and this, remember, is going to be painted as well. Normally on the GT Black Series, the boot lid stays gloss black regardless of what color you have. Even if you have the AMG Magma Beam, the bright orange, for example, that would always be gloss black. But to give this car a touch of unique identity, that's gonna be going solar beam yellow. Now, very quickly, we do have in the Cheers by Shmi 150 shop, the V8 by Turbo design and plenty more to check out. The link to those is down below. Plus, we also have the Shmi GT Black Series design from Heel Tread with the GT Black Series theme, the solar beam yellow, and even the SH61 MEE plate on the bottom of it so check those out all the links are down below but seeing the car like this is truly bizarre we cut to our tires but basically what's going to be happening is everything kind of from here backwards will become solar beam yellow so even if you see through the door shuts all you'll see is yellow we'll have a look in the engine bay as well in fact let me just give this a pull and it's quite odd to open up the bonnet while it's on the car like this but inside here you don't really see any body color. In fact, you can just see silver metal components, the carbon finishes over the top of the air boxes. So there's nothing in there to really worry about. Obviously, this is being done to the finest standards. Chartwell are very experienced at this, having done the repair on my center and having done the paint job on my SLS Black Series. So I know it's in good hands, but it's fascinating to see a car when it's opened up like this, when you can see all of the components, when you can get a proper look under the skin. This is a carbon bonnet, and this is going to be one of the most challenging parts, in fact, because of the masking that needs to be done, the fine masking for the exposed carbon areas, combined with the finishing lacquer that will go over the top to give this a completely smooth result. At the moment, you can feel the step change, but the finished result of the paintwork here should have all of that lacquered in a very, very smooth way. Now, talking about paint, we've got some of the panels. Look at all of this. We've got the wing panels stripped down from the blades. We've got the louvers that go over the wheel arches. These have been sanded down, effectively prepared already to be painted. The solar beam yellow is a multi-layer paint. It's a very, very complicated paint. They need to be done right. We've got the doors, we've got the side skirts, and these are quite complicated as well because they actually have a part that stays matte black that's hidden behind the carbon fiber, as well as the solar beam yellow main parts that go up towards the rear wheels. Then over here, 
we've got the bumpers and these bumpers actually have the carbon parts bonded to them particularly the rear you see quite how large the carbon wraparound part there is if you try to take this apart you run the risk of cracking it and if you crack that it's probably i don't know a 10,000 15,000 pound part so we're going to leave it like that paint the satin black when that's been prepared it's just always a little bit odd to see these finishing tips which aren't actually the real exhaust system and a lot of people still wonder why this is but by having these and then the separate tips on the back of the car effectively what it means is that if you got bumped from the back this wouldn't then damage the exhaust which would run the risk of damaging the powertrain so it keeps them separate and allows them to look however the manufacturer would like them to be designed as well but this is as i said quite the bizarre way to see my car it is totally totally odd but this is just the start of the process i suppose the next time i come and see it it is going to start looking yellow already but now it's just been fantastic to get a bit of an update and to see how the progress is coming along as the strip down process has begun to get this painted yellow what an awesome opportunity to see this stage in the process there is a lot more still to be done at chartwell in fact until this is complete will probably be another four to six weeks or so depending on parts now that is one of the biggest problems at the moment as i experienced with the sls black series getting all of the different things you need to do an operation like this especially with a new car where all of the available parts effectively go to the production line for the assembly of brand new ones might prove to be a challenge we'll have to see exactly how that goes while we're here though by the way very quickly i'm sorry for the background noise of course this is an active workshop there are multiple spray booths currently in operation but it's a big thanks to the team at chartwell for letting us come along to see this stage of the work in progress to see what is happening with this i think it adds an extra dimension to see what it goes through as part of the transformation to make this solar beam yellow and talking of solar beam i do actually have the paint sample outside i think we're going to have a very quick look at that before we hop back in the taycan for potentially a mission back to the museum we'll have to see how that goes for now though this has been amazing i'll come back and see it again very soon perhaps when the panels are going solar beam before we hop back in the taycan then for the journey down to the museum very quickly the paint sample in solar beam now today is a very overcast day and you can see it's almost mustard this golden yellow but when the sun comes out on it the color really stands out and i cannot wait for this on the gt black series for the time being though let's start the journey in the taycan and see how this charging process is going to go we're joining the motorway then heading south on the m1 now we currently have 95 miles of range and just over 100 miles of the journey to go pretty much all down the motorway but the good news is that i do know where i want to go to charge this up i've done these kind of journeys enough times now to have a bit of an idea about where some of the let's say actually useful chargers there are plenty that do not work so well but there's one that we're going to go past which does a nice job now sometimes in the taycan my phone has a bit of a problem with the gps reception there's something about the windshield and whatever acoustic glass technology we have in here and the gps signal in my phone that means they don't work but if we try this okay google drive to ionity charging station milton Keynes. sure ionity charging station let's go perfect right so we'll drive there we'll go and get this charged up i guess that's going to be wait for it one second about 65 miles from here so we'll have about 30 miles to go which is good because you want to charge this up when it's pretty low charge it for a short period use the Taycan charging card Porsche own a part of Ionity so that's all a little bit cheaper you get the discounted rates top it up for a short period and fingers crossed again that should all go to plan we've made it then on a beautiful afternoon to the Ionity charger which means I am going to grab this Thankfully, it looks like it's all fully operational. Like I said, I have used this one before. Watch out for that. I've had a good experience here as well. So hopefully today is going to be fairly stress-free. We can open this up. We can open that up and plug this in here somehow. Always a little bit awkward. Click. Right, that's in place. Let me go and do the paying process. Get it started and see how it goes. Done the paying bit, preparing to charge, setting up communication with the car, which I should go and have a quick look at what it was down to actually at the end there. See what the numbers actually are. 14%, 34 miles. That is now on charge. And we're going at five miles a minute. 
so this isn't going to take all that long. I'll show you how much of you that you can actually see with the light. But 4.9 miles per minute is not bad. And it's actually, whoa, look at that. 10.7 miles per minute. I don't think I've ever seen it that fast before. 235 kilowatts. That is the fastest I have ever seen this car charging. Even at 190, that's still the, well, would have been the fastest I've ever seen it charging. That's rapid. That is exactly what this should be about. If it keeps going like that, this is going to be done in no time at all. Crazy, huge numbers. This is charging so quickly. We've been here for 10 minutes and it's up to 50%. 36% done in just 10 minutes. Honestly, this is probably the best EV charging experience I've had to date at Ionity, getting this charged up. We could go easily now and the rest would be not a problem. It slows down when it gets to 52%, 52, 53%. It drops down to about 100 kilowatts. So that's generally the best time to just leave it. It's worth being here another minute. It saves charging at home and then we'll get on the road. And obviously when we get home, we'll plug it back into the SeaTac home charger and take it from there. But that has done a really nice job very, very quickly, barely any longer than we would have been at a petrol station for gas station if we were doing it that way. Indeed, 52% down to 100 101 kilowatts. So we'll unplug it, get this back on the road. We're back home, the Taycan is parked up. I will plug it in in just a second, but we've got all of the other cars sitting pretty. We've got a gap waiting for the GT Black Series to add a touch of color that we don't have here at the Schmuseum. But today has been an example of the positives of living with an EV, going for a journey much longer than the range that the car could theoretically manage, but not having any issues charging it up. And in fact, we have a little bit more charge left on it than I thought it was going to have. So very quickly, let me see what we are up to. On the screen, wake this up, we have got 34%, 79 miles. So that's plenty to get home and back a couple of times, but I will charge it up again because I'm gonna be here for a little bit longer. But this is the beauty of having a charger. You can start on 100%, you can get back home on low percent. And this is what I was missing before I had the garage. The plan was always to get this garage after getting the Taycan. So I experienced the stress, we could say, of relying upon the charging infrastructure for longer than I would have intended at the start. But let me just see if I can do this one-handed. Get the charging cable out, bring this round, come and plug it in just over here. Open this up. Of course, this is the normal non-rapid charger, but the fastest we can have on three phase at home, which would do the car if you had the upgrade in about four and a half hours. That plugs in, get started. Blue light will start blinking. Give it an hour or so and it will be up to 50% or something like that. Plenty to go home and back again tomorrow. Charge it up when I'm here tomorrow and it will be, well, easily full by the end of the day. Not too complicated, to be honest. This actually makes a car like this, which is quiet, which is calm, which is effortless, which has lovely technology, a really nice car to take for a 250 mile drive like today. Something very different, of course, to all of the combustion engine equipped cars in the garage, like the GT Black Series as well. But thank you for coming along today to see the progress. It's going to be another four to six weeks or so until all is completed, but I'll try and go and see some of the car being painted to get an update on what that looks like for now leaving this to charge up, a few things to get sorted out. Huge thanks to Chartwell. Thank you as always for your support, guys. That's it for this time though, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.